right out of my head the way he described it he said I'd be better dead than life I didn't listen to his jive I knew all along that he was all wrong and I knew that he thought I was crazy but I'm not don't know my analyst told me 
that I was right out of my head. He said I need treatment, but I'm not that easily led. He said I was the type that was most inclined, went out of his sight to be out of my mind, and he thought I was nuts. No more ifs or ands or buts. Say, as a child, I appeared a little bit wild with all my crazy ideas. But I knew what was happening. I knew I was a genius. What's so strange when you know that you're a wizard at three? I knew that this was meant to be. Now I heard little children were supposed to sleep tight. That's why I got into the vodka one night. My parents got frantic, didn't know what to do. But I saw some crazy scenes before I came to now. Do you think I was crazy? I may have been only three, but I was swinging. They all have an angry young man. They all have an Edison and also an Einstein. So why should I feel sorry if they just couldn't understand the idiomatic logic that went on in my head? I had a brain, it was insane. Oh, they used to laugh at me when I refused to ride on all those double decker buses. All because there was no driver on the top. What, no driver on the top? And the chick is twisted. Crazy. Oh, Blueberry Hill. Take it away, you get it. at the Nuthouse, Augusta's Comedy Palace, the newest, brightest rising star in comedy today. She'll make you laugh. She'll make you cry. She made you kiss nine bucks goodbye. The first lady of comedy, please welcome Miss Tootie Manguso. <laughs> Ladies and germs. Yes, my name is uh, Tootie Manguzo, and uh, today I would like to talk to you about my favorite subject. The subject is strange. And you know, uh, I look out into the audience and I think that this is the right crowd for strange. Lady, is that your hair or are you doing an imitation of a toilet brush? <laughs> Speaking of strange, all right? Now, not only are the rich and famous eating edible flowers. You know, I thought that was a little strange. Those are two words that should never go together, edible and flowers. <laughs> but now, fancy restaurants in New York City are now serving marinated rat meat. <laughs> this is true, marinated rat meat. Okay, am I up here all alone or does that strike you as just a little strange, you know? Now, extraordinary, that's kind of a strange word, don't you think? I graduated from high school, I speak the English language. Extraordinary, break it down. It's two words, extra and ordinary, okay? Now, to me, anything that is extraordinary would be extremely bland, <laughs> right? Especially boring. But no, the American Heritage Dictionary defines extraordinary as remarkable, exceptional, delightfully different. So yeah, I guess it's just a question of perspective. You know, it's a strange language. We all knew that before. But since we are, speaking of strange, I'm going to take you guys on the road with me. You know what's really strange? 
The way we treat people with mental illness in this country is strange. We ignore them or abuse them on our streets. We over-medicate them in our nursing homes and our hospitals, and we sensationalize and ridicule them in our media. You want to know the difference between a strange person and one who is extraordinary? It's us. It's these, our eyes. It's not who the person is. It's how we choose to see them. The next time that you encounter someone with a mental illness, I dare you, no, I challenge you to see the extraordinary person. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. People with mental illness have been dealt an unfair hand for generations. They've been typecast as crazy and dangerous, when that's the farthest thing from the truth. Isn't it about time somebody wrote a new script? Ah, oh, kid, come on in, come on in. Sit down, take a load off. So, kid, what you got for me? Is it good? Of course it's good. Kid, you are the best screenwriter in this business, and you can tell him Rocco said so. So, tell me about this movie idea you've got that'll make us both billionaires. Bigger than Spielberg, the two of us. So, kid, what's the plot? Well, Mr. Rocco, it's about this guy who has a mental illness. He's in a mental hospital. Oh, great. I love it. I love it. We can have him go crazy one night and torch an orderly hair and all. No, 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 Mr. Rocco. He gets discharged and moves into an apartment. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. We'll have him move into a nasty little roach-infested apartment in the slum. No, no, no. He moves to Beverly Hills. Oh, oh, you're right, of course. No, 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 wait. This is better. He moves to the slums, but he thinks it's Beverly Hills. No, Mr. Rocco. He moves into a nice apartment and gets a job. Oh, I like it. We'll get him a job as, as a dishwasher. And then, during an all-you-can-eat fish Friday, he blows away the entire no-smoking section of a Bob's Big Boy with a 357 semi-automatic Uzi submachine gun. In 3D! It'll be beautiful! No, no, no. He gets a good job as a college professor. Oh. Oh. He kidnaps a co-ed and throws her off the library bell tower. Kid, I think you've got something here. Let me call Bernice in to write this down. No. You're right. We don't want Bernice to come in. I'll get Esther. Esther has better breath. No. He doesn't throw a co-ed off the bell tower. He marries a co-ed and they have a baby. He marries this beautiful blonde bombshell. Yeah. She was the 1974 avocado queen from Orange County. Then one night, after a particularly bloody episode of Star Trek The Next Generation, he chops her up in 3D with a deluxe Vegematic. It slices, it dices, it even makes wife's law. And then... No, Mr. Rocco, no. You obviously don't know anything about mental illness. Don't you tell me what I don't know, kid. Look. You want to know about mental illness? I can tell you about mental illness. My little brother Joey's got a mental illness. He was in the San Diego Valley State Mental Hospital for four long years. And I visited him every Tuesday and every Friday for four long years. You don't think I know about mental illness? Who do you think Joey moved in with when he got out? Who do you think got him used to taking his medication, huh? Yours truly. And who do you think got him a job? 
He's been the senior script consultant over there at HB Studios for the last four years. So, don't you ever try and tell me the truth about mental illness. Mr. Rocco, if you know the truth, if you know how often people recover from mental illness, why do you want to make a movie with all the blood and guts? Kid, kid, you got a lot to learn, kid. What town is this? It's Hollywood, kid. Don't you know, recovery does not sell. Even though recovery doesn't sell, it does happen. There are people all over the world who have recovered from mental illness. Friends of yours, family members, people who have been through a lot but are happily working and living in society today. Hurry, 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 step on up, step on up. Welcome to Psychos R Us. Don't be shy. Oh, you look like a nice family. Why don't you come on up? Come on up! See things you've never seen before. Thrill to our electrifying rides. Why, you'll be amazed. Your hair will stand on end. See the rubber room. Bounce off the walls. Jump to your delight. Giggle and laugh. Or if you prefer, relax. Spend an afternoon in our delightful day room. While you're here, don't miss our latest attraction, Psychos of North America. See Lizzie Borden, Norman Bates. <laughs> or maybe someone you know. Hey, isn't that Aunt Marilyn? What's going on here? I'm sorry. Aunt Marilyn's no psycho. Got She's got an illness. Yeah, you said so yourself, up. Mom. Shut up. I think we should have up. Son Why do I have to shut up? She's not so different. And so, Bill is not so different. People that you uh, want to something's wrong here. The next time you encounter someone with a mental illness, I challenge you to see the extraordinary person. Different face and walked a different walk 
So then no one could call you crazy. <laughs> yes, all of you. You can stand up now and show your strength. Where is that? Each of us have been surrounded by the words of a frightened society. Today, today, we give you new words. I will ask you a series of questions, and you will answer back to me with the words you see on these cards. Do you understand? We do. We do. We do. Who knows what we want? We do. Who knows what we need? We do. Who controls our future? We do. Who controls? 